If you're in tanks and make no mistake, you've come to the right place. Just give to Neil the time to straight up blow your mind with a new show of joy in a plank. Hello everyone and welcome back to Drawing a Blank. This week we are once again delving into the world of magic trees and creatures where you watch me world build in real time as I throw things at the wall and see what sticks. Last time we talked about death magic and its absorbing abilities, as well as the cryptid-like legend of the miracle death sheep. And after another close vote resulting in a tie, and then another tiebreaker vote, my patrons landed on Space Rat for this prompt. I think I came up with my idea almost immediately for this one. Unlike Death Sheep, which I ended up spending a lot of time pondering exactly how I wanted to make death magic work in this universe. We'll get to my thought process here in a second, but first, let's go over what my patrons drew for this prompt. First up, we have artwork from Strange. Ooh, I love all those purples. Oh, and the patterns. What a cute design for a rat. Like, it's very different from most other rats. That, mm, love it. Beautiful work. Next up, my own spouse, Whitney. Another little triangle piece of pie. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Purple rat space, yes, love. Next up we have art from Moon Tuft, who actually gives a little description with this one. Space rats are ancient creatures born from the very flames of a star. Due to this, they are said to be in tune with the universe and upon opening their third eye, have the ability to speak to all living things in it. For this reason, they're very powerful animals. However, their ability can have negative effects on them if they use it too often or for long periods of time. Looking just like normal rats, the only way to spot one of these creatures is by looking closely at their foreheads for a tiny slit covered in fur. Nice! Oh, that's cool! Willow the Lycera gives us this lovely piece of artwork, which has just a whole group of characters together. Oh, so atmospheric, so peaceful. I love that. And for this one, Willow says, they are three husbands stargazing with their three star-themed children. Aww. The characters are Starjumper, Mono, Volkner, Zenith, Corona, and Falcule? Falcule? I hope I'm saying that correct. King Facial Hair, nice username, gives us this piece and boom! Oh man! Running across the galaxy. That's so cool. I want to see something like this in motion. That'd be awesome. Hobohime gives us some different colors here. Pinks and blues with like a big, oh, mm. Yes, I love the shape in this one. Very nice. I love how a lot of patrons are taking a very abstract approach to a lot of these prompts. Whereas, you know, obviously mine are grounded in like a fantasy world or whatever, but I love the abstract prompts. Speaking of which, CQ Studios is next, and they say, Adding this, since I felt it was a little unclear how this relates to the prompt, I decided to take a more abstract interpretation of space. I found it was too big of a concept, so I narrowed my thoughts down to the mass that fills it. My character floats because it can manipulate the mass around it, making the surrounding air heavier than itself. <laughs> oh, that's Cool! Yes! I love the creativity. Awesome. Auntie Samo blesses us. Oh my god! Look! <laughs> Look how cute they are! Oh, they're so precious. It's a little gift. Oh, my heart. Oh, that's so good. And the little baby has, has star pattern. Oh, star and moon. Oh, oh, bless. Oh, that's so good. So, so good. Next up we have Zwa. Oh my god. Zwa, your artwork, it's so good. Oh, that looks so aesthetic and peaceful. Oh, I love that. I love the colors too. Froggy windowsill. Yeah. I actually, I do remember you working on this one. Oh. Yes, and it turned out so good. I love how you made the rat space itself and then it's got like a neb, like an aurora borealis for its tail. That turned out really cool looking. 
Willow ended up doing two prompts. So here is their second one. And here they say, this one fits a little bit more with the actual prompt. I went with a bit more of a simplistic design, but I didn't think she needed to be anything flashy. Her name is Void, and she is the mayor of sorts in a town full of tricksters and charlatans that was totally not inspired by Halloween Town in the Night Before Christmas. Why do you ask? <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Next up from Shinko. Oh, uh, we have a whole... Oh, ooh. Really good idea. We have a whole, like, zodiac of rats as like the different astrological signs. Uh, I don't know astrology very well, so like I'm, <laughs> I, I can't tell you how good, how like well you did like portraying these, but I can like pick out a lot of them and I think that's really cool. Ugh, rats should be added to everything. They're so cute. Sapphire tinted. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> So cute. Oh, that is so cute. And then with the little earrings and the, 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 the ring on the tail and the little snake around the ringing around the planet. Oh, that is adorable. I love it. This one from Leaf of Dawn. Oh, oh, that is so cute. Of course, the moon being a piece of cheese and the rat is eating from it. Oh, I could see this as like a little coaster or like a little print. Oh, that's adorable. I love your your style and like just the 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 very whimsical feeling you gave this. That's awesome. Next up from Spotted Time. Oh, a very simple drawing and very very cute. Love that. The composition is nice. It gets the idea across perfectly. Good job. And lastly, we have a submission from Snowy Ferns. Ooh, who gave us a whole little character sheet here. Before sighting, two weeks and one month. Oh, cool. I like the evolution of that. A temporary and completely harmless skin condition that occurs in albino rats when they gaze upon a supermoon. Astral hyperpigmentation will start in the rat's eyes and then spread throughout the next month in patterned streaks that resembles a galaxy. After a month, the condition will gradually fade until the rat is no longer afflicted, at which point the rat will be immune from contracting it again. Oh, so cool. That's awesome. Ah, oh. dang, you guys just nailed this out of the park. Like, blow, you're wonderful and you make me happy. Beautiful job, everyone. Can't wait to see what y'all do next time. Okay, so now let's talk about some world building for my own project. First things first, I knew that space was a pretty broad subject up to a lot of creative interpretation. Space could be literal outer space. Stars, moon, sun, comets, astrology, all of that stuff. And as you can see, my patrons obviously took advantage of that, but it could be a little different, a more literal meaning of just space, as in like the space that we ourselves occupy and move around in. And of course, if you can manipulate space, that is the perfect setup for teleportation powers. I've never really been big on astrology stuff anyway, or outer space, so this was a much more appealing direction for me to go in. Actually, to be honest, one of my key influences when thinking about space powers was definitely Zigbar from Kingdom Hearts. He's one of the members of Organization 13 who uses space portals along with his weapon to snipe his opponents from all directions, even using portals to ricochet bullets all over a battlefield. I love this concept, so I am shamelessly taking it. <laughs> so yeah. I want my space magic to be able to create portals for teleportation in a similar way. A novice magi would be able to create a single portal transporting to the other side of the room, or maybe a tiny portal that they could toss something into, while an experienced space magi could create several portals at once or teleport long distances at a time, though usually only to places that a mage is super familiar with and has been to before. You wouldn't want to get into a snowball fight with even an amateur space magi. They would wreck your shit. 
Because of this power, space magi are actually highly sought out in transportation work. And I know, I know, it sounds really mundane, but I actually really love thinking of the practical uses for all these wondrous magic powers. So large cities will hire space magi to move people around quickly and efficiently. And if you can afford them, hiring a personal space magi can be a real time saver. Of course, this means that space magi need to have a good understanding of places that they would need to teleport to. So most space magi are well-traveled. Even though space magi are born and raised on their own home island, away from most other magi users, they can work all over the world and teleport home anytime. Thinking about all these different powers gets my brain buzzing too. I wonder what it might look like to see a fight between a space magi and my present time magi flow. Move aside fire and ice fighting dynamics. Let's see a time versus space fight. <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked though. When a space magi has finished their schooling and basic training, it's a rite of passage for a young space magi to travel the world. Sometimes they choose to go alone, with a family member, or with a group of friends. Space magi culture encourages them to leave their island and go exploring. After all, they should be able to teleport back home if anything bad happens. While they can obviously teleport people, it shouldn't be dismissed that they can also just teleport objects. Got a big cumbersome object you need to move? Space magi can make quick work of that. Groceries? Done in minutes. Catering? Direct service from the kitchen. You get the idea. Space magi are useful basically everywhere. And luckily for the rest of the world, space magi are mostly content working anywhere. It is hard to stop a space magi if they would choose to use their magic for less lawful activities, however. As a result, a number of space magi have taken their explorer natures to heart and live a more roguish lifestyle. Some petty theft, some disappearing peoples or bizarre accidents. I mean, how else would you explain that boulder dropping from 50 feet out of nowhere onto that greedy nobleman? And some space magi are full-on treasure hunters, mining for loot in abandoned cities left behind by dragons. Nobles will pay a pretty penny to any adventurer who can bring them back authentic booby-trapped dragon treasure. It's a dangerous job, but some find the thrill worth the risk. Some space magi also seek a more rock star career, entertaining masses with bewildering space manipulation magic and feats strange and surreal. Space magic can be very showy, and its undeniable practicality and general usefulness is what motivates my characters here today. Speaking of which, before I get into that, I wanted to clear something up that I've seen some questions about. Any animal, human, or creature, whatever, could have any type of magic. I know that with these drawing prompts, it might seem like only snakes have time magic, or only sheep have death magic, and so on, but that's not the case. The type of magic you're born with is based on your proximity to magic trees. So even though I'm talking about space rats here today, there can be space cats, space humans, space griffins, you get the idea. Now, rats have historically gotten a bad rep in a lot of stories for a really long time dirty, thieving, creatures of darkness and disease, and I didn't want to lean into that. I think the perception on rats is changing, and that's good, because rats are honestly pretty cool. They're smart, they're cute, they're driven, what's not to like? So for my characters this time around, I really wanted to create a brotherly dynamic. I think I was kind of set on the idea from the start. A positive sibling duo trying to make the world a better place, and maybe a quick buck. Meet Astrin and Callius. Astrin is the slightly older one of the two, and got to start his world traveling first. When it was Callius's turn to explore, the two brothers went together. Callius got them into trouble with his curiosity and roguish charm, and Astrin got them out of it with his reserved bookish smarts and quick thinking. They lived for a while as vagabonds, roaming from town to town, taking on some odd jobs in villages or on farms before moving to a new place. While they traveled, Astrin noted how useful their magic was for so many people and how it could make people's lives better if they had access to it all the time like space magi did. 
For the most part, the world still travels long distances by carts, boats, or even their own legs. There aren't enough space magi in the world to meet the needs of everyone. So when Astrin and Callius came home, Astrin got to work. Callius worked to support the both of them, and Astrin focused himself on more book learning and studies. With a mixture of magic, science, and alchemy, and many years of failed experiments with less than perfect controlled tests, Astrin finally did it. He found a way to bottle space magic so that anyone could use it. At least anyone who is a seasoned magic user. Being the more charismatic of the two, Callius went out and began selling his brother's miracle potions to the public. At first, they would be rightfully wary. After all, how could a potion take the place of a highly trained space magi? But after some demonstrations and some heavy warnings on how to use the potion safely, it was deemed a success. Astrin was pleased his potion could help people, and Callius enjoyed the small fortune the two brothers had worked so hard on. But this success came with more complications than either brother bargained for. <sighs> Using the potions could still be dangerous if not treated with proper care, which, after a few unfortunate incidents, Astrin felt he had to stop producing his current formula and find something safer. But he finally got there, and Astrin even thinks that with enough study and testing, he could find ways to bottle all forms of magic. So, while Callius sold the latest current batch of space potions, Astrin began speaking with high-level professors of magic from all over the world to try to perfect his recipe and his hypotheses on bottling other magics. As they traveled the world selling potions and gaining popularity, things started to go south quickly. For starters, they couldn't meet the demand for their product. Callius suggested raising the price or trying to mass produce the potion, but Astrin refused. If they rose the price, then his potion would only be sold to the elites who could already hire personal space magi to teleport them places. And if they started mass producing space potions or gave out the recipe to make space potions, which was already a really delicate process, it could cause many more harmful incidents or put space magi out of work leading to a whole other slew of issues the brothers hadn't considered before. And on top of all that, Callius and Astrin began getting shadier and shadier buyers. Astrin knew he couldn't control how his potions were being used, but now that the world knew that it was possible to bottle magic, every nation was hot on the brothers' heels to get an exclusive deal from the two. If it weren't for their own space magic, the brothers are sure that they would have been captured over a dozen times by now. Of course, all of this was devastating for him. The good that Astrin had hoped to do was dashed, and Callius could do nothing but stay by his brother's side. Even home wasn't safe, since they knew that other nations might be so desperate to find them that staying on their island could mean attacks from pirates or hired mercenaries. So now the brothers wander the world in disguise, only going into towns when absolutely necessary. Callius refused to let his brother give up on his dreams, though. Astrin has began teaching Callius the alchemy required to make potions, and the two still study science and magic, hoping to find answers to the mysteries of the world and maybe how to bottle other magics. They know to be careful with who acquires this knowledge, but they can't help but keep trying, hoping that one day their work might actually do some good. So that's where these brothers are now, currently working in secret and maybe getting some odd jobs in the countryside from time to time, keeping a low profile. Design-wise for this one, I wanted to draw Astrin and Callius at the peak of their potion selling times. Well-dressed explorers, unaware of the trouble brewing. Callius out front, doing the selling, and Astrin watching, hopefully. I had fun with the fashion here, since these boys would be better dressed than any of my other prompts so far. I definitely think that fashion and clothing is more of a personal choice of self-expression in this universe, especially for creatures like animals. Obviously, while the animals have human-like intelligence and are anthroed a bit, they do lean closer to their realistic anatomy rather than human anatomy. So, in this case, rats don't really need to wear pants. I think it'll be a fun way to make up fashion that is both fun and functional for the animals that wear it. In particular, I had a fun time designing Callius's coat. It looks nice, without restricting his movement. It expresses his more open and carefree nature, plus an appreciation for nice shiny things. 
Astrin's outfit is a bit more restrictive. He has a high collar and a hat that he can kind of hide himself in, showing his more reserved side. And he wears a pair of gloves to keep his hands clean, reading glasses, and scrolls that he can scribble in whenever he needs. He's a well-educated little scholar, and I think his clothes show that off nicely. The potion itself was also a ton of fun to paint. Astrin would have to procure bottles of all sizes in order to properly distribute potions with the right amount to their customers. When coming up with the idea, I imagined one of those smoky, glittery ball toys that you can shake, but it also looks like a little swirling nebula on the inside. I personally wish I could have a little collection of these little glass bottles with all the different kind of magic. I think that would look so cool. And a reminder that right now over on my Patreon Discord server, everyone's voting for the next prompt. So, if you would like to be a part of these videos and get the chance to vote, you can do that by joining the Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You can also be a part of this project by creating your own take on the prompt and submitting it to us as fan art. We look at fan art every Saturday on stream, so if you've got an idea for space rats, death sheep, or time snakes, I'd love to see them. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Hope travels treat you well and stay inspired.